excited. All right. Welcome to Base Lessons. Yay. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is how to make walking bass lines using uh, a method that I developed and published in my doctoral dissertation. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mr. Fancy Pants over here. <laughs> um, so what I have are five different methods, and um, I'm just going to share my screen with you now. So what I have here is just a 12-bar blues progression with a quick four-chord change. And so I'm going to take a little bit of some notes down here for you. Um, Sweet. So, and then I can send this to you. Yeah. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it works. <laughs> so I have method one. I use roots and fits. Oops, I can't type very well. Roots and fits. Okay, so an example of that, I'm going to play the root, um, actually let me add a key signature, otherwise it would be mad at me. Okay, oh it transposed, joyous, don't transpose finale. Um, so an example of this was, would be, I can play this root here, and this fifth up here. Roots and fifths. Um, the reason I'm doing two roots then two fifths in a in a four four swing kind of idea is if I do root fifth. Oh, that's the wrong chord, but whatever. Root fifth. It sounds more like polka. <laughs> we don't want that. We want it to swing. So I'm separating the bar in half by doing two roots and two fifths. So if I keep doing it, I got there's a root root, and I can do the fifth by octave like that if I want, and then I can do another octave, root, root, fifth, fifth, root, root, fifth, fifth, root, and notice that I do the root on every change, and let's take a look at how I'm doing this, so I have a golden rule, <laughs> the golden rules are root on the change, so when my chord changes, I'm going to play the root, approach my half step, whole step, or perfect interval. So F to E flat is a whole step. This B flat to this B flat is an octave. That's a perfect interval. This F to this B flat is a perfect interval. It's a descending fifth. There's our whole step again. So I'm trying to think about these rules. If I stick to these rules, I will always sound good. Um, always is a relative term. And these rules are tools, not necessarily rules. Tools, not rules. Um, because you'll hear bass players play the third on the downbeat or, you know, whatever. But this is the strongest uh, way to tell your listener that's the new chord. That's the new chord. Right. Okay. All right, so that's example of root and fifth. Okay. Okay, and then next, the next thing is method two. Arpeggios. So with arpeggios, I, d I don't necessarily like this. Boom, boom, boom. Or even like, if that's a third. I mean, and then, right? I guess I could use my piano keyboard that's sitting right here in front of me. <laughs> right, so if I play this, It works. It's fine. But the thing about this sound, it's not wrong. Nothing is wrong about this. But what this will kind of do is it'll sort of, um, it, it harkens back to a point in jazz um, that's more like piano-based, boogie-woogie kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then out of that came rock and then rockabilly and then country music. That's sort of the way that that kind of bass line went. So nothing about this is wrong, but it sort of gives you a specific kind of vibe. It's almost a specific style of walking bass line to go one, three, five, three, one, three, five, three, that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to avoid that and make it sound more um, 
organic, whatever, natural, more improvised per se, is to take the arpeggio notes and just put them out of order. So instead of going one, three, five, I might go one, five, three, one, one, three down here, then five, then the root, and then maybe this. Something like that. So let's listen to that one. Right. So it sounds a little more um, flowy and not so repetitive, right? But I'm just using the root third and fifth. You can use the seventh and sometimes. That totally works. Um, so that's arpeggios. Any questions so far? Uh, no. Okay, good. Okay, number three, scalar. So I'm just going to use the scale of the chord. Um, I only have four beats, so I can't do all the entire scale. But depending on what chord is next, it might work out great. Uh-oh. Hmm. What do you think about this? There's the root of the next chord, and I'm playing it on beat four. Probably not the best. Why? Why? Um. Hmm. Because you're about to go to that chord anyways, and you want to establish the chord change on beat one. Yeah, it's not written like this, huh? Yeah. So here's what I can do. Even though this is a scale pattern, do re mi fa. This might be a better answer. Do re mi so fa. Cool. That works great. And then as far as the scale, I can either go up or down. It doesn't really matter. So let's go down. I did the same kind of thing here. I skipped the root and then played it. So let's listen to this. these two bars. I've got a whole step here between those two notes, right? These two notes is a whole step. These two notes is a half step. I've adhered to my rule up here. Awesome. Nice. Now, if I have changes that last more than one bar, more than likely I can just, oops, quit yelling at me, Benali. So I just went right up the scale. That should be an A flat. Why is that an A flat? Why is that a D flat? Why do you think? Mm -hmm. Why is this D flat and this A flat? Um, it's the seventh. Yeah, it's the flat seven. Awesome. Okay, so now I've got this whole line that goes all the way up. I got this high B flat down to the root here. That's a perfect interval. I stick to my rules. Yay! Okay. It's jazz. Great. Okay, that's method three. All right, method four is a lot of fun. So, chromaticism. With chromaticism, you can pretty much play whatever you like. Pretty much. The concept here that I'm going to use is I still want to play the root on the change, but let's say I only have the B-flat chord for four bars, which is typically a blues, too. I mean, you've, you'll see that. Okay? Yeah. So what I want to do is maybe I'll play chromatically, whatever I want, and I'm going to phrase this in a two-bar phrase. So maybe I'll do...
Okay. So notice I didn't I didn't play I didn't follow the rule here. I went from a third to the root. That's because there's no change here. It's the same chord. So check this out. Yeah. Woo! Nice. Totally works. And I could do and I just picked random notes. So Chromaticism works really well um, over static stuff, static harmony. So, for example, if I had um, like the tune like So What, it's 16 bars of D minor. What else? Mm -hmm. That's a long time to play D minor. I'll, I'll just play it on the keyboard. So what it might be is like... You hear me hitting that D every couple, every four bars or every two bars or whatever, right? And doing that on your bass. D. D. Right. It, your your the listener's mind will be like, oh yeah, it's D something. Right. Right. So it works really well over static stuff. That is chromaticism. Easy. Yoink. I knew I was going to delete my chords. <laughs> I better just do undo. Because I want my E flat back. There it is. Okay, and the last one is what I call above slash below half step. Okay. So the way that this works is I'm going to play the root on beat one and the fifth on beat three root fifth root okay on beats two and four i'm going to play a half step either above or below the note that comes after it the preceding note Okay. So if I've got an F here, I can play an E natural. I've got E flat here, I can play a D natural. So that's below and that's below. I've got a B flat here, I'll play a B natural. That's above. I've got uh, another B, I'll do the low one. That's below. So check how this sounds. A little creepy, but also kind of, this is sort of like the, you know, uh, sort of movie noir bad guy music. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Because our brains don't really care what happens on two and four. Right. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. here's another cool thing about method five. Down here at the end... The turnaround of the blues, I have two chords per bar. So I can use the same method here, except I just do the root. Root something, root something, root, whoops, <laughs> root something, root something. Okay, so I can do above, let's do A flat. I can do below. That's a B natural. I can do below. Oh, wait. That's an E natural. But that's not in the chord. Mm, we'll see how that works. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to repeat back to the top. So let's do a B natural. Cool. Listen to how this sounds. Pretty cool. So that works really great over quick changes like that. Okay. Those are the five methods. Now, here's what we're going to do. Oh, finale, why did 
could you give me an extra bar that I don't need? Okay, so here's what I want to do. Um, I want to make a baseline using these five methods. And we're going to do it without using your base. I just want you to pick a method for this measure. Pick one. Um, Doesn't matter. Scalar. Okay, do you want to start up, up high or down low? High. Okay. Do you want to descend? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that gives us an A flat in the chord. Oh, it's beautiful. Gorgeous. Okay, now what for this bar? Um, arpeggios. Okay, what note do you want first? The fifth or the third? Uh, the fifth. Up or down? Down. Okay, now the third? Yeah. Okay, up or down? Down. Ooh. Now what? Um, back to the fifth. Yeah. Okay. So that gives us this fifth. Oh, right. This fifth is this root. So that means, by default, I will approach this by perfect interval, which is an octave. Nice. So that works. That's okay. That's not going to freak your brain out like this low one would. Yeah. Because okay. this one would be like, oh, Oh, she played that a beat early, but this won't do that to your mind. Okay. okay, so with two bars of the same chord, I can use one method for this bar, one method for this bar. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little. Or I can use one method for both bars because there's not a change. What would you like to do? Mm, two bars of chromaticism. Okay. You want to go up or down? Um, uh, let's go down again. Okay, so that'll be our root. That's where we're going to go to, okay? Okay. All right, so now let's do A natural, A flat, G, F, E natural, E flat, D. That's kind of like straight up, almost fully chromatic. I got a whole step there, but that's okay. Well, look what I did. I played the A flat on beat three. I went past it, played a D, came back up to it. That's this half step rule, isn't nice. it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got two bars of E flat. What would you like to do? Um, um the last one. What was it called again? The half step above below? Yeah. Okay, so which fifth do you want on beat three? Up or down? Um, Okay. And then what root over here? Um, Up or down? Down. Okay. And what fifth do you want? Uh, down. Okay. So now we go back and go, okay, above or below this note? Um, below. Oops. <laughs> A natural. Okay, above or below this note? Above. E natural. Okay, above or below this note? Um, above. E natural. Okay, and which root would you like here? Um, the... Up or down? Let's see. Down. Okay, above or below that note? Below. A natural. Okay, cool. All right, what method would you like for this bar? Uh, roots and fifths. Perfect. Which which fifth would you like, up or down? Down. Would you like two of those, or would you like an octave? Oh, we can do an octave, yeah. Okay, cool. That puts us here with G, because that's a whole step. Nice. Okay, what method for that bar? Um, You've done them all, by the way, yes. by now, so now <laughs> you can just pick and choose. Yeah, um, arpeggios. Okay, third or fifth next? Um, third. Up or down? Down. Nice, that'll be a D natural because of the chord symbol. Okay, what now, fifth? Yeah. Okay. And back to the B natural. Cool. 
Whoops. <laughs> Already marked. Okay. So that B natural gets us this C right here. That's a half step to that C. Okay, what method now? Um, chromaticism. Okay, so we're going to go up or down? Up. Okay, so that gets us that F. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we can do. We got C, C sharp, D, E flat, F. Sure, that works. Like I said, chromaticism works best when you have more static harmony, but you can still make it work. That'll sound fine. Cool. Okay, what method here? Um, then scale or back down. Okay. Oh, stop it. Nice. Okay, so now we have our quick changes. So here's the thing. If I do roots and fifths, so roots and fifths works, arpeggio works, above below half step works. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's say I want to pick roots and fifths. I would just play a fifth next, and then the root, and then the fifth, and then the root, and then the fifth, and then the root, and then the fifth. Okay. So that's roots yeah. and fifths. And because they go by quickly, the changes go by quickly, it won't sound like polka. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. So that's roots and fifths. If I did arpeggio, well, we know that the fifth is also part of the arpeggio. So the difference would be it's the third, right? So root, third, fifth, third, root, third, root, third. Okay. Yeah. So I can do root, third, root, third, root, third, root, third. Okay. okay. Um, and then, of course, the half step above below, right? So I've got my uh, roots. And then I pick. So let's do let's do number five, since I did those other two for you. Pick above or below for here. Um, below. Okay, that'll be an F sharp. Okay, above or below here? Above. That will be a D flat. Okay, above or below here? Um, below. That will be an E natural. And then let's repeat back to the top so we have this high yeah. D flat. So above, we'll below. Above that, above that? Okay. Yeah. That's going to be an A natural. All right, there is your bass line. You want to read it? Can you read it? I can hit play, or you can try to read it. I'll try to read it. OK. OK. Oh, it's A natural. cool thing about this you did it by picking random things from a set of rules and it sounds good yeah so the thing about doing this is um composition like this is just improvisation in slow motion when i improvise and i play these walking bass lines at a jam session or on the fly at a concert reading chord symbols, I'm doing the same thing just in real time. So to develop that natural skill of being able to do it quickly, I would write bass lines using these methods that I came up with. And the, I came up with these methods by transcribing a lot of bass lines. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I uh, analyzed them like the roots and fists are there, the arpeggios are there, chromaticism's there. That half step above below thing is there. Um, and I just kind of quantified them into five easy steps. Um, so there you go. You wrote that bass line and it sounds great. Uh, in fact, let me go back to it. 
and let me go to chords. These chord voicings are terrible, but let's hear it with some chords. Yeah. Oh yeah, those are horrible. We're in junior high jazz band. <laughs> oh, it doesn't know how to play that cymbal. Okay, it doesn't know. It doesn't know how to play the dash. Oh, finale, we love you. Okay, so you're hearing the chords. All right. Uh, and it works harmonically. It works. Even the weird stuff that we put in with the half steps and the chromaticism and stuff like that. It still outlines the blues. Awesome. Okay, any questions about it? When you like play this in real time, mm -hmm. do you like look at the chord symbols and just like switch and make that like decision right then and there? Yeah. Um, let me pause the recording and grab a bass. I'm gonna try something with you. Okay. Hold on. Okay, we're back with the bass. All right. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to use those same changes, mm -hmm. and I want you to hold up a hand, your hand, one, two, three, four, or five, and I will change my bass line based on your finger. Okay. Okay, so what are we starting with? Give me what to start with. Two. Okay, so I'm going to do an arpeggio. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Switch. Yeah, switch anytime you want. Okay. Uh, let's start over. Yeah, go ahead and switch. All <laughs> go ahead and switch anytime you want. You can switch randomly. You know. Okay, okay, okay. All right. It's easier for me if you switch on beat four, but it doesn't really matter. Here we go. I'll start with our pigeon. <laughs> Two, three, okay. four. Maybe there's some zoom delay. I know, I think there is. Yeah, okay. A little sketchy, but you get the idea, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um so what I would recommend is just getting some changes out of your real book or whatever you're working on in jazz band or whatever that that you need to do walking for and write some bass lines. Just write bass lines for it. It also gives you and you use uh, do it without your bass, right? Just pick pick out of the formula, right? Right. And then you have free sight reading material. Yay. 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 <laughs> now you hear me doing some extra skip notes. I don't do that many. But, but, <laughs> oh, you can see the, the rainbow lights from my Ooh, luminescence beautiful. keyboard. On my pickguard. That's nerdy. Um, but <laughs> I do a couple extra skips once in a while. But not many. Right, so there are 48 quarter notes in a 12 bar blues. I might play between 48 and 55 notes in a 12 bar chorus, just adding those extra eighth notes. Okay, cool. Yeah, you can play around with that, but we'll talk more about that le uh, next time yeah. in our next lesson. Cool. Cool. Any questions? Hmm. Um, I don't have like too much 
um, chord symbol knowledge and like I'm, I have to like spell it out in my head. Okay. Before, so how do you how are you able to just know right off the bat like what? I have a video on my YouTube channel that I will link you um, in. I'll link it down below, or actually I'll just text it to you. But I have a video that explains how to read chord symbols quickly. Oh, sweet. And and that's also written out in my dissertation as well. So I'll oh, send that cool. to you. Yeah, that'd be great. But basically what it is is I break the chord symbol apart into easy components that you can quickly recognize. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you don't have to think, okay, wait, is it supposed to be flatted or sharp or, yeah. you know. Yeah. Really... The, the best way to get better at reading chord symbols is you just have to know the major scales really well. Because everything in a chord symbol, chords come from scales, right? Mm -hmm. The major scale has um, two major chords, a dominant chord, three minor chords, and a diminished chord in it. Um, and then from that chord symbols alter those notes that are in there. So, for example, if we were in C, C major 7 just exists naturally in the scale. But C7 has a flat 7 in it. Or you could also think of it as this is the fifth chord of F major because that flat 7 exists in F major. So every chord comes from somewhere, somehow. Um, even crazy wacky chords like sharp this and flat that and all that yeah. what whatnots those come from those come from scales. Could be the melodic minor scale. It could be the octatonic or whole, half step whole step diminished scale. Um, it could be a lot of different places where chords come from. But chords come from scales. Cool. Yeah. So knowing your scales will help you know your chords. But I'll send you that video. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's on my YouTube channel too. You can find it there. But I'll send a link. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Anything else? Mm. Um, in jazz, um, they mention like the modes a lot. Do you think like memorizing all the modes, the modal scales, is like important too with that, and it goes along with this? Yes, I think knowing how modes and scales work with the chord that's presented is important. So you did it yourself in. I mean, you recognized it in this exercise where the D flat in an E flat seven has to be a D flat because it comes from, you know, it's the flat seven or whatever. But yeah. knowing what mode that is, is also very handy in creating the baseline if you use the third method, which is scalar. Um, so if it's a major third and it's got a flat seven in it, that's the fifth mode or mixolydian. So knowing that stuff's pretty good. But when I, actually when I improvise, Everything comes from, like all the all the sort of norm, let's say normal modes, mm -hmm. uh, church modes, diatonic modes, whatever you want to call it. All come from the major scale. So if I've got a minor chord, um, like, and I want to play minor a minor sound over that, Dorian is a minor mode. Well, Dorian is the second mode of D major scale, so. I'm just going to play D major scale. But I start on E, which is the same kind of idea as thinking about modes. Okay. So I know what E Dorian is, but when I'm improvising quickly, I just think the mommy scale, the parent scale, the scale from which that chord comes, right? Okay, yeah. Which is the major scale D. Nice. And I'll do the same kind of thing with, you know, uh, altered chords or chords with extra goodies in them. I, I just think about the main scale that those chords exist in. Okay, cool. But also I know the modes. I just know, I mean, I know them theoretically, but application, I just think, you know, it's Occam's razor. I think the simplest term, in the most simplest terms, especially because I have to be, I have to think quickly. You know, when I'm improvising on the spot, I have to think fast. Right. You know, sometimes it I just don't even think about it. It just comes out, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, modes are important. Are you taking jazz improv? Mm-mm. 
Oh, you totally should as an extra yeah. goodie for fun, just yeah, for I fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, but we can work on it too, in our yeah. in our base lessons for sure. We will for sure. Perfect. Awesome. All right, we got like five minutes left, ish. Anything else? Ask me uh, anything. AMA. Hmm. Anything you want. <laughs> Let's see. Um. When you memorize these, do you like sit there and just play them until you like have them stuck in your head? Um. When I first started out, like modes and methods and stuff like that. Uh, the the most important thing for me was writing them. Like okay. just the process of writing them out made them stick in my head more. Mm. You know, like if you want to memorize something in English, write it out. Yeah. And write it out a ton. So when I was a little kid, I had to memorize. Um, we hold these truths to be self evident that all men are created equal. Blah blah yeah. blah blah blah. I and I wrote it out. Okay, a bunch yeah. of times I wrote it. And that helps me memorize it. So writing out bass, bass lines will help you a ton. And what's cool is as you get more jazz band music and you see charts with written bass lines, you go, oh, that's method two right there. Oh, look, that's mm. method three right there. Oh, look, there's method one. Like you'll start seeing it. Yeah. Because it's just, cool. it's there, right? Yeah. It's just like learning a, a written language that's foreign to you. Eventually, you start recognizing characters, you know, like I, I was learning Russian a little bit last year, and it's crazy to read those letters, man. It's wild. Yeah. You know, they're just so, yeah. it's like Chinese, same thing, Chinese, Japanese, exactly. all the characters that we're not used to seeing. It's just time on task, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. So write, 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 write a lot of bass lines, and then it'll start yeah. to just end up, and what's really cool the reason I have my students do this is by writing your own, you're creating your own sound, your own voice, using stuff that always sounds good. Mm, that's cool. Yeah. yeah like and that. if you're careful and aware of those, those um, rules at the top, then it's hard to screw this up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> that is nice. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So for your homework. Um, just pick a blues or a tune that you're working on or a tune that you like that you know that you've played before. Um, get the chord changes. You have iReal Pro, right? Or a real book? Um, yeah. Okay. Pick something out of there and just write like 10 choruses of bass lines. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then we'll look at them next week. Sweet. Sound good? Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. Good. Me too. Okay, cool. Let me pause this recording.